Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here. Now normally you're used to seeing me in the backyard, enjoying a cocktail, cooking on the barbecue, just relaxing. But right now, our local restaurants need our support, just like they've supported us over the years. Our restaurants are local, they're safe, and they're awesome. Let's head into London and enjoy some of those great restaurants and see what they have to offer. I'm downtown London on Richmond Road right now and I'm hungry for tacos. And when I'm hungry for tacos, I head over to Dos Tacos. Let's go over and see what's happening. Knock, knock. What's hey up? Jeff, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, thanks. I'm hungry for tacos. I know these are crazy times, but I'm hoping we can get some tacos and see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Did you order online? I did. Right, you know what? I'll just let you in and show you what we're doing uh, in the background. Right now we're only dealing takeout, but we'll let you in and show you what's going Perfect. on inside. I've got a mask. I'll join you inside. Asad, thanks for inviting me in. I appreciate it. These are certainly challenging times right now. How are you adapting? Absolutely. So it is challenging, not just for us, it's for everybody. Uh, it has been, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of an adjustment for a lot of businesses and us being a restaurant and we used to having people eat inside. Uh, we used to do takeout before as well in catering. We had to put the catering on hold, uh, no dining in of course, and we're just uh, doing a takeout window. So uh, at the time we're just you know, accepting orders over the phone, online, or have people come up to the window, place their order, we make it and get it out to the window for them. One of, one of the things I think is really neat is to see how our London restaurants have adapted and risen to the challenge of making people feel safe, not just your employees, but your clients, your customers, that sort of thing. Right away, same thing, I come up to the window, you have a mask on, you greet me right away. Everything just feels safe. And I, I see no reason why we can't come downtown and enjoy all the great restaurants. They're, you know, they're local, they're safe, and they're all awesome. So Absolutely. I'm hungry for tacos. All right. Do you well, think we can crash your kitchen to make a few? Yeah, let's go make some. Zayed Assad said that uh, you were gonna make up some great tacos for us to try. Yeah, I absolutely. know you have some new things on your menu. So one of the things though, he asked me when I came to the take, did I order online? And I said, no, if I was going to do that, how would I do that? Absolutely. The, the option for ordering online for us right now at the moment is dostacos.ca. Okay. You can go on there, order online. Uh, you can choose what time you'd like to come pick it up. Everything comes directly to us at the store. Uh, and then what you would do is have to come and meet us at the takeout window uh, and we'll have everything ready for you there. You can either pay ahead of time online or you can pay at the window. Perfect. Love it. Let's make some tacos. And, these, and these are new to your menu. Yeah, absolutely. So we have, we're going to bring out two options for you. We're going to bring out our chorizo taco, uh, which is a new option that we had that we didn't have before. It's a ground beef chorizo. Uh, also, we're going to do a bang bang shrimp, which is a deep fried shrimp taco. Uh, with a little bit of a zesty sauce on top to finish it off. And these are tacos are new to your new menu? Yes, absolutely. All so right. we're, first we're going to do the chorizo and then we'll do the bang bang shrimp. Okay. Uh, as you can see, there are two different colored tortillas. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with it. These are just yellow and these are blue. It just comes from a blue corn tortilla. Uh, we have the option with any of our tacos, you could do yellow, blue, or even flour tortillas. Oh, okay. So we do have that option for everybody. Uh, but we'll get started with that chorizo taco. So chorizo is something that we didn't have on our menu before, but we do have it on there now. It's made with ground beef, a uh, few spices, they're all secrets, we won't say anything to anybody yet, but they do taste good. So what we top of this off is usually a little bit of our tomatoes and onions, and then obviously everything needs a little bit of sauce and a little bit of extra flavor. We like doing a little bit of our chipotle mayo in there. So we have the mild medium hot salsa. We also have our chipotle mayo and sour cream that we're doing on this taco here. A little yeah. bit of guacamole. Toast made guacamole Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. And then of course a little garnish as well, just on top. A little bit of cilantro. Simple but fresh Absolutely. and some, some real flavors going on there. Absolutely. And uh, this is bang bang shrimp? This is our bang bang shrimp. So you do see it a few other places as well, uh, but everybody does it a little bit differently. This is our little bit of a spin on it. So we got our bang bang shrimp here. So these are just deep fried Pacific white shrimp. So we do our in-house uh, pico de gallo. So we make everything here ourselves. Tomatoes, onions, a little bit of jalapeno, some garlic, uh, cabbage, kale, a few other things inside this cabbage mix. It's gonna give us a little crunch on there. And then what we like to top it off is what we call it is our bang bang sauce. So it's just a zesty, zesty mayo sauce. Uh, it's mayo based. And to get a little bit of creaminess in there as well, we throw our sour cream. And then everything, of course, gets guacamole everything because with a little guacamole. who doesn't like guac? Do a little garnish again, a little bit of cilantro. Awesome. Beautiful. There's Look our bang bang shrimp taco. Everything looks fantastic here. I noticed with the nachos, you put 
everything on the side, and it looks like you did something a little different. It's not just pico de gallo. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our, our uh, salsas on the side, we throw a little bit of pico on there, and then we throw our mild or medium or hot salsa on there for everybody. With the regular size there, you get two sides of whichever you like, our fresh made in-house guac or the salsa on the side. Gentlemen, thanks very much for inviting me inside. I know everything's being done through the takeout window. It's great to see you being taking precautions and being safe. I feel completely safe. I will definitely be ordering online, awesome. picking up at the window, taking home and enjoying some great tacos. So if anybody's wondering where Jeff is eating, I'm eating tacos at Das Tacos today. Thanks again, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna dig in here real quick and Enjoy. have a, a quick bite. As we continue showcasing some of London's fantastic and amazing restaurants, we find ourselves downtown at the Marienbad and Chaucer's Pub. Let's head in and say hi to Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Welcome to Marienbad and Chaucer's. Yeah, what do we do? Elbow bump Welcome. or bow or something? So, uh, Whatever we do as long as it's according to the procedures, right? There we go. We got we to gotta stay healthy and well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting us by today. Uh, already when you walk in, I think, wow, things look fantastic. You got time to sit down and get caught up? It would be my great pleasure. It's a little chilly out right now. How's the fireplace on you? That sounds the best. Let's grab a seat. Take care. All right, Jerry, again, thanks for inviting me by today. This is great. Certainly these are challenging times right now, for sure, for our restaurant industry here in London and everywhere, really. And I wanted to meet up with you because I know you're not just a leader in the community, but within the restaurant industry itself, you're sort of you know leading the charge on several fronts. You've, you've always been very involved in the community. Um, where are you at right now with what's going on? You mentioned you were talking to the health officials and sort of getting an update. Can you sort of walk me through where things are at right now? I certainly can. And you know, Jeff, uh, when you mentioned the first thing, kind of, you know, that uh, when you saw when you walk in, uh, the distancing, you know, the tables that we make sure they are disinfected after, before and after all our customers come in. I have to tell you, we are from our customer base, we are getting a really positive feedback. Mm -hmm. And we had certainly groups last few weeks and we have a couple of this week and uh, uh, they are all families celebrating different, you know, wedding anniversaries or big birthdays. And they called me and they said, Jerry, we feel we could, you know, yes, there is an option to do it kind of at home, but they say, we feel more comfortable to do it at a restaurant at your place because we know that you are gonna play it against, uh, according to the rules, and it's more restricted, and our family, they will be playing by the rules. When I, when I came in, I noticed, obviously, the fireplace, and took a quick look around Marion Bad as well, not just the Chaucer side. You ha I have to say, you have some great wood uh, on the walls, on the, the bars, that sort of thing. There has to be some history here, I'm sure. You can just feel the history in the air. Tell me a little bit about the actual restaurants. Jeff, there is, and you know, one of the things that I'm trying to tell to our or our regulars, they know about it. You know, all the wood that you see in both of these places, Marienbad uh, and Chaucer's on this side, Marienbad on the other side, it comes from the original London courthouse. When you look at, let's say, for example, the clock on the wall, that's a clock from the original London uh, train station. Oh, when you wow. see the lettering, reverse lettering behind the Chaucer's bar, those are the original letters from the. Uh, London Free Press when they used to print posters. Ah. So there's really a lot of history in this. You can not only feel the history in the air, it feels safe. I feel the, the space between the tables. You can tell, you know, when I see the, the different protocols you have in place, I have no question in my mind that I would feel totally safe coming and dining here, and I encourage people to get out and do that. With all this history, I took a quick look at your menu when I came in. It's a very classic menu as well. I noticed you have a few things you don't see at a lot of, ma a lot of restaurants for sure. Certainly, the ones that uh, you, uh, we are going to be showcasing today is the steak tartare. And as you mentioned, Jeff, we do have on our menu a variety of things which are kind of originating in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, my chef will be, uh, he's already keen to show you uh, his, uh, uh, the way okay he prepared this meal. okay if we crash the kitchen right now? And, Absolutely. And whip them up? Awesome. Let's do that right let's, now. Let's do it. I'll, I'll grab I'm going to put on my masks, yes, yeah, so we are safe. Chef. Hi. Thanks for letting us uh, barrel into your kitchen here. Jerry did say it was okay for us to do that. Yeah. I know you're you're uh, got a lot of classic menu items, and we're going to talk about steak tartare today. I know yeah. this is a great uh, meal that you're proud of. So why don't you walk us through how you put this together? It's a very traditional European dish, and it is chopped raw beef with no fat, very very healthy, <laughs> so to speak. And what we do, we chop it up. And then I get my special sauce, which I cannot give you the recipe. It's a grade A beef with no fat, 
no nothing, just pure meat sauces. Perfect. So right there we've got your chopped up beef and yep. we've got your secret sauce. We'll I want to again tell you there's, there's pickles, onions, capers. Those are one of the main ingredients that are in there. And then the rest is all herbs and spices. First, we usually start, we get the garnish ready first. So it looks like somebody cares. Do the extra capers, chopped onions. Then we'll just do, that's like an appetizer portion. The little dent for the egg yolk, which you get rid of the egg white. All you want is the nice yellow yolk. That's gonna add some nice creaminess, obviously, to That's it. for yeah. the creaminess. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the the more uh, fat part to it, like the egg yolk has a more fatty part. And we serve it with some toast, garlic toast. Gotta have that garlic in there for yep. sure, right? <laughs> You're not seeing that at every restaurant for sure right now. That looks great. No, uh, we are one of the places here in Ontario that actually allowed to do it. Like we have a special uh, form that you're supposed to fill out. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. interesting. Because yeah. it's raw meat. I, lo I look forward to giving it a try. Thanks for sharing that with okay. us. It, Thank that's you. super. And uh, we hope to come by and enjoy a lot of great meals here for sure. Before we dig into this and give it a try, I just want to say thanks again for not only inviting us by today and showing us, giving us a tour and talking about the restaurant, but for being the leader that you are in the community and you know, doing your part to make sure that restaurants are safe and, and bettering the industry as a whole altogether. So, Jeff, thank you very much and to your crew as well for coming. And this is tremendously important for us. And I honestly mean it from the bottom of, of my heart and not just mine, but all our, all the other owners and operators of the food and beverage establishments here in London. We are honestly very grateful for the support of and all the Londoners and people in Southwestern Ontario because without you, it would be even more challenging than it is now. Thank you, and we can't wait. All the operators, we can't wait to welcome you at our establishments. Thank you. We're going to dig into this, but as far as the restaurant, the, the rest of people in London, they're going to have to come out and experience it on their own. So I encourage you to exactly that. Cheers. Let's Cheers. enjoy. When I think of burgers in London, I think of the bungalow, and I think you'll agree. Let's head over, go for a quick tour, and sit down and see if we can convince them to make us a burger. Julie. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good. Welcome to Bungalow. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me come by today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm anxious to take a look around and see what's good. These are crazy times right now. Crazy times. Lots Unprecedented of stuff. times. Unprecedented. <laughs> well, if you have a few minutes, let's sit down and talk absolutely. about what's going on. Let's go. So, Julie, these are, as we said, crazy times. Weird things are happening for sure. Yeah. Um, I've, I've imagined they're impacting you and the bungalow in some capacity. I, for myself, when I came in, I noticed right away that you've, uh, you're following a lot of the health guidelines that have been posted. That's what, and right out of the gate, I feel completely safe being here. I, I can tell, you know, you have the sanitizing station you've adopted for. I didn't have to open any doors, that sort of thing. So I felt very comfortable. Do you find most of your guests are? comfortable with what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. We've got all the barriers in place. Um, the barriers um, fit the guidelines for the health board. Um, plexiglass, we've got wood barriers for the bar so that we can um, bar barrier people because they're not able to really distance at the bar. We have the barriers instead. Um, sanitizer stations everywhere. We wipe down every menu after use, every ketchup, every salt pepper, every mustard. Um, it's very safe. In I know she brought some menus along, yeah. and I, for one, am hungry. When I'm looking for a great burger yeah. in London, I always think of the bungalow for Perfect. sure. <laughs> do, do you have a favorite? Um, so the burgers are all on the back page. Um, my favorite would just be a build your own. Um, I always get the beef burger, um, cheddar cheese, brioche bun, bacon, and about 15 toppings. Do you find that most of the people coming by bungalow, it's, they go after the burgers? Is that the? Um, about 75% of them. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of burgers. Any idea how many burgers you... We actually calculated it last year for our 10th anniversary, and it was almost 200,000 burgers. 200,000 burgers. I tell you what my favorite is when I come by mm -hmm. is the wild boar. I, it is a favorite for a lot of people. Is it? Yeah. I, I love that. I come by specifically just to have that. Yeah. But I've never built my own, so if you're comfortable, can we build our own burger and go in and watch Absolutely. the chef together? Yeah. All right, great. Absolutely. Let's do it. So, Dan, 
you're, uh, I'm told you made 200,000 burgers. Is that true? I haven't, but the restaurant has. Yes. The restaurant has. <laughs> Great. So you make all your patties from, they're all homemade, right? Yeah, all 100% yeah. from scratch. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is going to be Bill Drone, so we're using beef? Uh, yeah. This so, is locally sourced beef from Simcoe, Ontario. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So walk me through a little bit. So you do, you, what do you, when you're making the patties themselves, are you adding anything to the beef? Uh, salt, pepper, roasted garlic, that's it. Start with the flat top and we sear it. Okay. So after a quick sear, we'll just move that over to the grill. Okay. And while that's cooking, what kind of bun do we... Uh, so this is a seeded Kaiser. Uh, it's from a local bakery. So again, you're going local, local beef, local bread, yeah. local whenever you can. Yeah. So what, what fixes do we put on the build your own? Somebody would have just picked whatever they wanted to use, tomatoes. Yeah, so why, mean, don't, why don't you build it the way? We do have like 30 toppings. So uh, why don't you set it up the way you would, you would dress it? So we'll start with arugula, a couple tomatoes, red onion, and pickles. So how long do we normally sit on the grill for? Uh, it's going to be about five minutes with uh, one turn and then a flip and another turn. Okay. And then we'll cheese it and put some hot toppings on that side. Okay, perfect. So we got roasted red peppers, caramelized onion. This thing's going to be massive when you're done. House made bacon jam. Well, slow down there. Bacon jam? Yeah. You guys make your own? 100%. What, so just cook up some local bacon, I'm guessing, and... Uh, balsamic, brown sugar, a little bit of pineapple, onion, garlic. Perfect. Can't go so wrong with we'll that. Let that sit for about a minute. All right, so we're just going to give it one quick final turn here, and we're All done. Right. Okay, let's load that up. And what are and we adding now? Gonna finish it off with a little bit of sriracha aioli. Julie, thanks again for inviting us by today. Everything, you know, was fantastic. It was a great tour. We looked around, and I keep stressing how safe I feel. Your staff look very comfortable and very concerned to make sure that your patrons feel comfortable and safe, and your team feels comfortable and safe as well. That being said. The burger and fries look fantastic. Thanks for joining me. You're going to eat half of it. I am not eating this entire burger. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to jump in. I noticed the chef put uh, vinegar himself right on the fries. Yep. So, But you mentioned it's not just plain vinegar. It's uh, rice wine vinegar. Gives it the um, very distinct flavor that our fries have. And he sprays that right on. And yep. I'm going to guess you guys make your fries yourself, right? We do. We cut them fresh every day. Fresh cut fries, rice yep. wine vinegar sprayed on them. Mm -hmm. Build your own burger, bacon jam. Yes. This is heaven. Let's dig in. Thanks again. You're Look welcome. forward to digging in. If anybody else wants one of these great burgers, you're going to have to come to the bungalow and order one. Cheers. Let's dig in. Cheers. London, full of great restaurants, full of great inns, and full of great breweries. Let's head into Toboggan on Richmond and meet up with the brewer for a great tour. Sam. Jeff, how you doing? Good. Welcome Thanks. to the Toboggan. Thanks. Thanks for inviting us by today. Absolutely. If you have a few minutes, I know you're busy, but if you have a few minutes, we'd love to get caught up. Definitely do. We can great. take a seat over here. And Super. Well, Sam, great to see you. Thanks for the beer. Yeah, Appreciate cheers. it. Cheers. Good to yeah. have you down. Yeah, so these are certainly oh. unprecedented times. And as you and I walked around a little bit earlier, I noticed you have the barriers up, you have sanitizing stations here and there. Everybody seems to be taking things pretty serious. I, I feel completely safe sitting in here, having a bite to eat, having a beer. How have the last the last you know couple months affected you? What's what's happening? Uh like you said, it's unprecedented. It's definitely been a huge adjustment phase, probably, you know, for everybody on the planet right now. Um, the restaurant industry, uh, I can only speak on behalf of that. And as a brewer, that part is, uh, it's been, it's been a really steep learning curve. Uh, you know, if we're speaking optimistically, there's still ways for us to move beer and food. So we've been trying to really emphasize for uh, you know, takeout delivery, and we're trying to grow that on our beer side as well. So, uh, we're going to be starting an online beer store, and we're going to do home delivery with that as well. And we're doing the same thing with uh, the restaurant side. So, if you want food and beer, we can deliver that to you at home. I and think. I and I encourage them to do exactly that. This is fantastic. I've never seen how beer is made. I understand you're doing it right on location. 
Can we uh, leave our beer here and take a quick look at how you brew this? Absolutely. Perfect. So I appreciate it. We'll Thanks. just go downstairs, and that's where the brewery's at. So, Sam, I appreciate the tour of the brewery. Obviously, you know, we've been upstairs plenty of times to enjoy some great food, but didn't realize what was happening right below our feet. So, I, I'm not a beer maker. I've never made... Walk me through the process. Yeah, well, welcome to the brewery. Or this is kind of the storage area for the brewery. Um, it's not an area that a lot of people maybe who come visit us have the chance to experience or go on a tour of. I think there's maybe some misconception that it's brewed off-site exclusively or anything, just because the brewery's not visible from where they're seating. So I see grains. What th This is what you're using? Is there different types of grain here? There is, yeah. So we have a few different types, or more than a few. I won't get too specific with mm -hmm. it, but uh, kind of the base malt for all of our beers is uh, Canadian two row barley or uh, Pilsner malt. And what that does is it gives us a good foundation to uh, create the base of the beer or for producing something like a Pilsner that will be the only malt that we're using. So that's the whole uh, barley kernel. And from there, what we need to do with that is we need to mill it. So the mill is actually right behind you. It's the first step in the process for us other than weighing things out. So after we mill them, they come through a conveyor and they go into the mash mixer. So here in the brewery, this is the next step of the process. Uh, it's where we combine the barley malt with the second ingredient, which is water. So uh, usually right around 65 or 66 Celsius uh, for most of our ales or uh, Pilsner. Uh, and what that's gonna do is that hot water is going to steep the grain, which we have milled and it kind of makes like a big forage consistency and that's gonna start breaking down the starches into simple sugars and that's what the yeast is ultimately going to ferment and turn into beer. From there we pump it over and we wanna make sure it's nice and clear. We aren't bringing any husks with us and we can go to the kettle behind. That's where the third ingredient, which is hops, are added to the beer and hops we can accomplish a few different things. Uh, bitterness is one that comes to mind for people and depending at the time we add them, we can get different kind of aromatic or uh, flavor bitterness out of them. And then uh, from there, we cool things off and bring them to fermentation. So these are our fermenters. We have uh, eight of them down here and it's, it's a high number of fermenters for a brewery our size, but they're fairly small capacity. Each one's about a thousand liters. And why that's convenient to us is our ceilings are pretty low down here. Uh, we are in the basement used to be a parking garage so these all had to be custom made to squeak down here great i noticed you have a couple different pieces of equipment you can do kegs and you can do cans we so can a quick second show us how that happens and this is our keg line so we can wash steam sterilized kegs on one side and then we can fill them and from there it can either go out to other bars and restaurants or even home consumers who have their own like draft beer dispenser oh, at nice. home from there uh, either goes upstairs we also have a couple tanks that are uh, like the bright beer tanks and they're hooked directly to the taps upstairs. Okay. Um, if not, then we do have a can line down here as well. It's a All small right. two head filler, but that's enough to service our retail store. Anything else, uh, you know, we would want it to be pasteurized and we need higher production volume. This all sounds amazing. Like I said, I don't, I've never made beer. Incredibly interesting to see what it is. And when I think of beer, I think I want to have pizza with it. And I understand you guys make a pretty awesome pizza. Yeah, it's uh, not my department, but Eddie kills it in the kitchen. So well, well, let's get one of Eddie's of pizzas us. and one of your cold beers, and let's go talk upstairs. Sounds good. Sam, that was a great tour. I was super impressed that that's all happening right here. I don't know how many times I've been here for dinner and I'm enjoying pizza or something upstairs. I didn't realize it was happening right down below. Yeah, that's I great. think that's really common experience for most people who come here. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's always awesome to be able to show people kind of how the beer's made and especially that it's, it's fresh and it's right below our feet right now. I appreciate the opportunity to go for a tour and see everything and enjoy some great pizza. So yeah, before we dig you. in, cheers to Toboggan. Yeah, cheers. Thanks very much. All right.